Um, one other piece of this that I, that I wrote down is pretty important. We don't just want to teach children what to do to have a relationship, what to, how to act, what to say. We want them to want to have a relationship. We want them to want to interact with people. We want them to care about people. We want them to care about relationships. And that is really important because anyone can force a child to do something. We're not trying to tick, a, again, to tick a task off a list. We're trying to get a child to really uh, be invested in other people. So that's one difference. ABA might see it as a behavioral disorder. We see it as a relational disorder. And thus, we treat it really differently. We treat children really differently. Next, next area is area of focus. Uh, now, again, we've, we've hinted at this. ABA tends to focus more on behaviors because that is the observable thing. Right? And that's one thing that, uh, oh, we are having some technical issues. I am going to stop right now and we're going to take a pause and uh, we're going to fix this all up and get you guys set up. So bear with me and we'll, we'll fix this. Hi, guys. We just thought, you know, we were thinking, they're so tired. They're working hard. They're trying to help their kids. Why don't we make some technical difficulty happen so that you guys could take a five to ten minute break? This, this, is the kind, this is the kind of service that we offer here. Really, really giving you the technical difficulties right when you need it. Anyway, let's jump back in. Um, it's actually, it actually broke at a perfect time because we were just getting to the second, uh, second area of difference, which was uh, the area of focus. And remember how I was saying ABA focuses on changing behavior and we focus on creating a relationship. So what does that mean? Okay, they might focus, they being, some, let's say someone practicing uh, applied behavioral analysis, they might focus on uh, discouraging a behavior. Um, at different times, they might punish or reprimand a behavior. Um, th the behaviors they might do that with are the two biggest ones are uh, stimming kinds of behaviors, but also if a child is being aggressive in any way or hitting or maybe crying, throwing a tantrum, that kind of thing. Now, I know there's going to be someone out there who's going to claim that ABA doesn't work like this anymore. And I have to tell you, we work with thousands upon thousands upon thousands of families who've been doing ABA and want to do something, and want to do something different with their child. And the vast majority of everyone's experience is that, that places that do this do still uh, reprimand their child, sometimes still use aver aversives, even though they might not use the name aversives. Aversives is sort of a, a something designed to get a child to stop doing it. You might yell no, or you might slap the child's hand, or sometimes more severe things. We have a school that is still running in my home state of Massachusetts that delivers uh, repeated uh, electric shocks to their children when they do behaviors that they want them to stop doing. Um, and this was controversial, it was in the news. Uh, so you can't really make the claim that this isn't happening anymore. Um, one other thing I do wanna just say, I'm gonna read this to you. I told you, we'd wade into some controversy here. I'm gonna make sure we, we, we live up to our, our commitment in that regard. Let me just read you this as well. I got this from a mother who um, just recently uh, took a, a tour of an ABA school. It's not the same one that delivers the electric shocks in Massachusetts, this is a, a different school. Um, that I'm not going to get into the name of the school or where it's located, but I want to tell you about her experience of it. She said she saw a series of rooms. The first room had five children. I'm going to read you what she wrote. first room had five children. The first child was being restrained with both of his hands uh, kind of hugging himself, and his hands were being restrained, and the therapist was holding him down in his chair. Um, she said she could actually see the child's fists and knuckles turning white. Uh, as this is happening, another therapist in front of him is repeatedly and with a stern voice asking him to tell her what the picture is that she's pointing to. Uh, after several minutes, the child is let go of, and he is still screaming and moving all over, and the therapist continues to ask him what the picture is. The child still screams, but, but now while screaming, the child points while crying, and the therapist marks a scorecard. She then goes into the next room. The next room has two boys playing a board game and one therapist on each side next to each boy. One boy looks like, she said, she, he has a freeze cry on his face, meaning he, he has a, the facial expression of someone crying even though he's not overtly sobbing. Um, 
his face looks stuck in that expression. That's what she said. Uh, he has no language, and the other boy looks to have a little bit more animation and tries to play the game. The other boy with the crying face has to have the therapist do hand over hand, which means that the therapist is basically playing the game, and even at one point is shielded from even looking at the therapist directly. Uh, she says, I guess this is taking place because the therapist is trying to promote the two boys to look at each other. So they're promoting that by trying to force them to do that. Um, at one point, the boy who looks like he's a bit more animated looks at the therapist, looks into the therapist's face, and the therapist takes the boy's head, turns the boy's head away from the therapist so that the therapist is facing the boy across from him. So she, he's not looking apparently in the right way that she wants. She wants him looking at the other boy, so she turns his head physically so that he's facing the other boy. Uh, while this is going on, there is a scorecard that the therapist is filling out. Both therapists look bored. Um, so this mother then goes into another room. Uh, there are two children playing a game, and each have a therapist directing them. Uh, there's a little girl, and she says, I am told, this is the mother talking, I am told uh, this girl is at grade level, and the little boy, she, I don't know anything about. Uh, both kids have a dazed look and a withdrawn look on their faces. Uh, I ask if, there are, if they are on medication. Uh, she's told they're not on medication. The children appear to be robots. This is, this is her writing. At one point, the little boy was told no, no, and hand over hand was done to force him to play the game. The little girl was just going through the motions with no expression whatsoever and no eye contact. Her therapist was yawning and looked bored, and so did the other little boy's therapist. These therapists were also scoring a scorecard uh, according to different skills. Now, the next room, I'm almost done here. The next room I visited, this woman visited, had two children doing speech therapy. Both children had no language. The therapists were working with oral motor with a vibrating instrument similar to a toothbrush. At one point, the therapist was talking to another therapist and forgot to move the instrument in the proper way. So the boy moved the instrument to the next and proper position. No celebration was given. These therapists uh, did at least seem to be slightly happier than the therapists in the other room. Uh, there was another room, which was called the academic room. The observation window was covered, so she didn't see that. The final room was called the OT room, the occupational therapy room. Uh, the children, there were two children in this. Uh, one little boy had no expression and was very robotic, and the therapist also looked quite unhappy. The, th the other little boy uh, came in and was being filmed on a treadmill, apparently. That's what it says here. Uh, the children were either crying or robots. Every single child I saw was either crying or behaving like a robot. Okay, now, I'm not actually, contrary to what some of you might think, I'm not actually saying this to, to bash anyone. I'm not bashing the school. I, I actually believe that those therapists were doing what they thought was good. They were trying to be helpful to these children. I believe the school uh, was, was trying to do good. I, I cite this because uh, whenever I try and explain differences between ABA and Sunrise, uh, I keep hearing people claiming that ABA doesn't do any of the ABA things anymore. Now, I'm a little baffled by this because basically I keep having people as a way to defend what ABA is doing, claiming that ABA doesn't do the very principles that ABA is actually based on. Right? ABA is a behavior modification program. Um, it is actually from, it has its intellectual roots in Skinner and others who are actually focused on, an, on animal training.